steak. And we'll throw an ear of corn on there too. Now that we have some room, pork chop and a burger. There are two main reactions that take place during grilling. Just as if you took sugar in a pot and cooked it down to make caramel, those same reactions are taking place in food where the sugars are developing and getting darker and developing other flavors that we associate with caramel. Where sugars and proteins interact with each other. That begins a series of hundreds of reactions that create hundreds of different products and all of those are different flavor compounds. And those flavor compounds break down into hundreds of other flavors that you want to eat. Roasting coffee beans, roasting chocolate, baking bread, when you fry french fries and they get brown on the outside. All of these are the Maillard reaction interactions between sugars and proteins. If I boiled a piece of meat, that temperature isn't high enough to cause these reactions to take place. Anything that you grill, all things go through the same reactions, just in different amounts. It depends on how much sugar you have and how much protein you have. The other flavors are coming from the smoke, from the flare, from the fat dripping down, hitting the grill. The flip side of that, all these things that I've said that you want for the flavor of grilling, is where some of the compounds come from that some people will tell you are carcinogenic. We have seen animal studies that suggest cooking meats at these high temperatures when you grill them increase the risk of pancreatic cancer, colorectal cancer, breast cancer, stomach cancer potentially. We still need more research in humans on this. If I cooked this pork chop too far, black on the outside, totally cooked on the inside, some of the end results of the Maillard reaction, or if it goes for too long, is these heterocyclic amines. And those are thought to cause cancer. So people suggest don't cook your meats too far. If you really charred your onion, it's black, which is my favorite way to grill onions. You're still getting carcinogenic compounds. Fat, um, when it burns at high temperatures, also produces some compounds that, again, in animal studies, look to be carcinogenic. Those are called polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. They're multi-ringed carbons. They're one of the earliest forms of carbon in the universe and are thought to be one of the building blocks for the earliest forms of life. Number one, pre-cook some of that meat in your kitchen ahead of time so that the meat isn't on the grill at that super high temperature for as long a period of time. Cleaning your grill off before you put another hamburger or another steak on there. A lot of that charred compound might have um, some of these potential carcinogens. Trimming excess fat off your meat. If you are trying to avoid the health risks of grilling, it's not the grill that's going to hurt you, it's the meat. And so if you're really trying to eat healthier, eat less meat. But it's the season for grilling, and I think we all have to make choices in this life, and grilled meat is delicious. Mm -hmm.